Welcome back, Nick. Usually we start with some kind of intro or anything, but honestly, I just want to get through this because we have to get into the movie because there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, I'm Nathan, your half white guy. I'm Nick, your one white guy. Welcome to the podcast where we talk about comedy, movies, and just go see the movies that you shouldn't see because you don't have to, but we put ourselves through it for you guys. We did this for you. We did this for you. Also, we have stickers now. We're going to be sending these out soon, but we got some made. Uh, Shout out to my friend uh, Raul who made a bunch of these for us. Thank you so much. Nick, what are we doing? Oh, well, today we're doing the fourth movie in Sony's Spider-Man-less Spider-Man universe, also known as Sony's Spider-Man universe. Very false advertising, much like this movie does yes. quite a lot. We are doing Madam Web. Who is Madam Web, Nathan? Well, in the comics, she was this like clairvoyant spider person that kind of guided like spider people. So that's like, Peter Parker and Jessica Drew. Is any of that in this movie? No. Released about a week and a half ago, directed by S.J. Clarkson, starring Anastasia Steele (laughs) as Cassandra Webb, Dakota Johnson. Uh, That girl from that really sad show as Julia Cornwall. I won't see Euphoria, everyone. Everyone keeps saying, you need to see it, you need to see it. I go, they're like, it's good. I go, is it good or is it sad? Because it seems to be a confusion nowadays. People equate, because it's really sad, it's really good. It's a bunch of punk-ass teenagers. Yeah, a bunch of about. shitheads. Celeste O'Connor from the Ghostbusters revival as Maddie oh, yeah. Franklin. Yeah, she's in it. And most importantly, Dora the Explorer is Anya Corazon. That's right, Isabel Versed. All right, Nick, would you want to lead us in with the IMDb summary? (laughs) Cassandra Webb is a New York metropolis paramedic who begins to demonstrate signs of clairvoyance. Forced to challenge revelations about her past, she needs to safeguard three young women from a deadly adversary who wants them destroyed. The entire movie is she can see the future and this other guy wants to kill these young girls. Like that, that's, that's the entire movie. Wants the to kill entire these movie. teenagers because they will eventually become spider people one day. Yeah. We don't know how, but they will. Nick, we're going to see it on screen, right? We're going to see it on screen, right? Right? The trailer, I assume, got downvoted like crazy because yeah. it looked like a lame movie. And guess what? It, it's even lamer than you it's think It's somehow it is. worse than you can possibly imagine. This movie is the biggest blue ball I've ever gotten in my life. And you has had these, expectations for this? I do mean that in, in all seriousness. There's almost nothing cool that happens on screen. Uh, all of the superhero parts of a superhero movie are confined to a minute and 15 dream sequence. This movie is like watching the parts of dreams you have that you don't remember. You only remember the really cool, fun stuff, right? The big stuff. Even if it was scary, that other monotonous shit that happened in your dream, you don't remember. That is what this entire movie is. Good assessment. I felt it was like you were watching something on TV you're not allowed to be watching. So every time your parents come in, you got to change the channel (laughs) and keep missing all the good stuff. (laughs) I keep missing the good stuff because my parents keep walking in. Except there is no good stuff. (laughs) It's just one run through of bullshit. We have to apologize to Morbius. Yeah, we're really sorry, man. (laughs) Feels like at least there was like some actual effort. As bad as it was, as boring as it was, they were trying. From the get-go, these people do not seem to care about this movie. And the line delivery feels melodramatic and like they're almost sarcastically making fun of the movie. Interesting how you called Morbius boring. I don't think Morbius is boring. This is boring. Lame will come up a lot. And then also there's a whole bunch of horrible ADR in it. No. Oh. But, but I, I couldn't help <laughs> but right. notice. And I, I texted Nick because I saw this first. And I texted Nick and I said, uh, when you watch this movie, can you pay attention to like the ADR out of some of these characters? It feels like it's somebody else doing the ADR. Especially the villain. Mostly the villain. I'm so confused. It doesn't sound like it was recorded in the same place. It doesn't sound like it's the same person. It doesn't even sound like they were given the same prompts. It was so bad. You can clearly see like the mouth doesn't match up at all. No. It's insane. I I couldn't believe that this is what they were doing. How was your experience? What what did you, how are you, how are you helping coping your way through it? I had a beer. Yep. That's the only way we could do it. All I could afford the moment how about you so i went and saw this i brought myself a little bit of alcohol into the theater wink wink and i knew i was gonna need it so i I came back out of the theater about halfway through because i finished all my alcohol i really thought i wasn't going to i said okay i'm not gonna drink this much and then the movie started and i said oh my god help me 
And uh, I helped myself to some... Regal Cinemas has some deals going on with Madam Web for their uh, bar. And I helped myself to a bioelectric vodka soda. It had Tito's handmade vodka, uh, <laughs> blue cacao, and club soda. Now, I might, you might be asking yourself, is bioelectric, is there like electricity in the movie? No. It just sounds cool. They did have an arachnorita, which I really thought about getting. <laughs> What's in that? Patron silver tequila. Ugh. Watermelon syrup, lemon juice, oh, lime juice, and agave. I would have gotten that. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> and then there's also the Web of Fate. Mango liqueur, Malibu coconut rum, and Coco Real. What's, what's that one called? Web of Fate. Web of Fate. Yeah. I'll take all three, please. Uh, I'll take all three, mix them all together, and slam it, because that's what you, that's what doing watching this movie feels like. Dude, let's go to a Regal after this. Let's just hit the bar area. <laughs> like, not see a movie. Let's just hit the bar, and let's try all these let's drinks. Let's try all the drinks, and we give a rating. Oh I was God. not so lucky. I saw this at a Cinemark, so I just had a Modelo. There you go. I, I just want to know, go ahead. how was your theater? Was there anybody else in there? Yes, and it fucking was dead silent the entire movie. Like, there like was how a many couple, people? Uh, maybe, like, 40 to 50. Okay. It was like decently full theater. It was dead silent until there was like one or two funny parts and everyone was just quiet. Nobody said a goddamn thing, which is really unheard of in today's theaters. You know, usually people talk, the shitheads. I really didn't care if people talked in this because I didn't care. But everyone. The shitheads just, talking were the people in the movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mine very similar, uh, very dead in there. Um, not as full as yours, but er, there were at least like a handful of people in each row. Like it was actually a lot okay. more people than I expected. I saw it on a uh, Saturday matinee. So it makes sense. Mine was a Friday night. The most laughs that I heard in that theater were from the Despicable Me 4 trailer. Oh no. Yep. <laughs> I remember that. Not just laughs, just the most, the, just the aware most, of human, like, human actual <laughs> yeah. experience that you're aware that humans are alive around you. <laughs> All right, we're actually going to get into the plot of this movie right now. So uh, this is a spoiler warning uh, for <laughs> for Madam Web. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we open on researchers in Peru looking for indigenous spiders. And in we're the immediately Amazon. back to Morbius. They're in some kind I of jungle. I was about to fucking say. <laughs> I was like, what is it with these Sony movies having their heroes originate from indigenous species from Latin American countries? I don't. No, which means we're back to Jurassic Park. I again. mean, at least <laughs> Venom came from space. So. <laughs> well, the funny thing, in the next episode, you're going to learn that Ven <laughs> Venom's actually Colombian. <laughs> He's got secrets from Colombia. Columbia Pictures presents Columbia's Venom. <laughs> that we Soy open lethal protector. <laughs> Like we open in Peru and these researchers are deep in the deep in the jungle. They're looking for spiders. And all I thought was one spider. You're right, yeah. movie. I should be watching arachnophobia right now. Yeah, here we are. We're at arachnophobia. That was Venezuela, technically. Yes. But <laughs> Cassie's our main character. We haven't met her yet. We first meet Cassie's mom. Cassie's mom is pregnant as fuck with her when we first meet her, like taking pictures of all these uh, spider webs. And we meet the film's villain, Ezekiel Sims, who's been hired as security for her. Ezekiel has his own motivations. He wants the spider for himself. He's hunting the spider. Yeah, but he's basically using this pregnant lady to find it yep. for him. She does find it, though. Off, off camera. Sc off screen. <laughs> off which camera. Is, which, which is going to be a theme this movie. A major <laughs> thing happened off screen. That's one. Let's keep a running tally. She comes running back into the camp with the spider in a jar, just like, I found it. I found it. I found the spider. What does Ezekiel start doing? He just shooting immediately. He just starts shooting the place shooting up. Shooting everyone in the camp. Not, being, not making sure that it's the correct spider. Not making sure that, you know, okay, I have a good clean out and everything with this. No, just open fires on everybody around him and the mom. <laughs> she, he shoots her like dead in the chest. I, I guess he gets the spider to bite him. Or something. Well, because like, we never see what he, how he gets his abilities. From well, I'm assuming spider. he gets it off screen. Well, I'll tell you what they should have uh, kept off screen is the uh, indigenous spider tribe people. Aranya, <laughs> the Los Aranyas. Las Aranyas. These are the people that have apparently bonded with the spider and gets the spider to bite them. They live in the trees and are super powerful. Can jump around. Are super smart. And are and we barely see them. We don't at really all. see them at because all. Because when we do see them, they look pretty bad. They look pretty bad. So they take 
Cass, uh, Cassandra Webb's mom, who's still pregnant and shot in the chest at this point. And, and they take her they to pick the, her up and they jump through the trees in horribly edited fashion. Yes. Just like uh, Edward and Twilight. Edward looked better. They take her to the cave from the Goonies uh, <laughs> where I guess they're in this cave and they like sum- <laughs> submerge her in like the waters of healing I, or something like that. They get one of the spiders to bite her to try to save her life. Yeah, as she's giving birth. Which, uh, she's shot in the chest already, but I guess the spider bite's gonna be like, let me push that bullet out. Why is it that, like, the spider's venom in this thing makes you super strong? How did this happen, specifically? Like, like, let me ask you this. From an evolutionary standpoint, why would a creature's defense system make you strong? (laughs) How does that happen exactly? Like, in, you know, in Spider-Man, it's a, it's a, it's a radioactive spider. Difference. <laughs> Things happen. You know, that, that's, that's the whole thing explained. This is a normal, just run-of-the-mill spider that, for some reason, when it bites humans, makes them super strong and fast. How many kids do you think went out after the first Spider-Man came out and let themselves get bit by any spider <laughs> because they wanted to see if it would work? Well... I know at least one of them because that was me, but that's a <laughs> that's a whole different story. Never mind. A tarantula. Ne- never mind. No, not that. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't like it was a little spider. It was fine. Tarantulas is like fuck you. <laughs> you leave me alone. These spider people, they all look like they're cosplaying as Sam Neil from the end of Event Horizon. <laughs> yeah, they're all like bloody and cut up and have like weird shit hanging no, off. No, I don't them. think they're cut up. I think they just, it's just, it looks like they've got like insides of like whenever you carve a pumpkin yeah. and like take the insides out, it looks like they just covered themselves in that stuff. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. <laughs> and they're all in red face. <laughs> yep. Oh God. <laughs> they are. <laughs> but it, it works. Little Cassie is born, but mom croaks. The leader says she's going to have, she's going to have questions, but... We're going to send her to America to live out her life. But when she has questions, we will be here and we will answer for them for her. He and doesn't then, even say that. He says, he says when, that to like the mom as she's dying. When she she's going to have questions and when she comes back, we will be here for her. I would, and I'm just like, oh, so we're not going to do the Beverly Hills Ninja thing where we keep the white baby with us. <laughs> we'll take a hole for mom, but we'll, we got to leave this white baby at a firehouse. So we're going we're gonna to send him off. And How the fuck did he get? Back to the States. I don't know. I, I'm assuming. <laughs> because smash cut to, well, this opening scene took place in 1973. Smash cut to 30 years later. It's 2003 now. Yes. The true. references to 2003 are silly. Like there's a, she drives by a blockbuster. There's a Martha Stewart joke. There's a Beyonce poster on the wall for like her, one of her first albums. Dude, I think. the soundtrack for this movie. I was just like, how can you do this to these songs? <laughs> Why did you put Deep Blue something in here? Why is Britney Spears' toxic used so much in this movie? Shame on you. Cassie Webb is now an EMT. Well, she's a paramedic, paramedic driver. No, she's a New York metropolis paramedic. Paramedic driver <laughs> in, in New York. And she drives somebody to the hospital and saves her. The family tries to thank her, by uh, and, and she proceeds get, to kid, tell them the, the family to fuck off. The kid gives her the, the, the little son, son, son of the woman she just saved, gave her like a drawing of you know her saving the mom, and she was like, and her awkward oh, ass is like, I don't know how to interact yeah, with kids. I, I don't, don't know what that. I'm doing. And I was like, lady, you're like. 33 you need to get it together <laughs> like it's not hard just say thank you and move on she basically was just like yeah i don't want that <laughs> fuck you kid <laughs> adam scott is in this as her uh paramedic partner and he is he's ben parker he's ben he's parker. uncle ben <laughs> he's uncle ben i saw him and it's just like when we know he's ben i'm just like i'm gonna die someday yeah, he's gonna which die. would make me sad because adam scott actually could make a decent uncle ben and he's the only one who seems to be trying. Yeah. Like, he's the only one who is trying to elevate the material he's given. It's got a point. No one else does. Yeah. But oh he's Ben God. Parker. And he's like to Cassie, oh, by the way, I met someone special. Oh, it's serious. Yeah. I'm not going to tell you her name. Yes. Because you already know her name. I'm going to say her name is June? June. Yeah. Yeah, June. Yeah. August. August. April. Aunt August. <laughs> And we get to meet the villain again now that he's there, Ezekiel Sims. He hasn't aged a day. He hasn't aged a day. He's he got has, a beard now. He That's has it. a New York City penthouse up on the top floor, and he is seducing some lady at the opera house. This random hookup lady he exposition dumps on her. Yeah. 
because he has these uh, nightly nightmares of the only superheroes in the movie <laughs> so killing him so we get we get Sydney Sweeney Celeste O'Connor and Isabel Merced as the three spider people that's uh Maddie Franklin Anya Corazon and Julia what's her name Julia Cornhole Corn Cornhole Cornwall Corn, Cornwall I was yeah. gonna say Cornhole <laughs> Julia Cornwall all dressed up as these different spider people uh, coming into his house and killing him and just wrecking his shit, Re- d- beating him up, just tearing him tearing, into an asshole, ke- stealing the spider and running out and swinging away all happy like la di da di da. They watch him in his ass. They yeah. throw him out the window. Yeah, uh, and, and then, and then go, he wakes up. And then you go, man, that was really cool. I wonder when that's going to happen. That was it. It doesn't. Spoil. That's it. That's that's the only piece of superhero shit in this movie. Also, the reason he's bringing this girl home to sleep with is she's an NSA agent and has access to all the government tracking that they started doing post 9-11, which is a weird reflection upon the Patriot Act era of the time. It's anyway, an excuse for him to get a bunch of technology so he can find these three. Yeah, and it turns out he can inject venom through his hands if he grabs you. The longer he holds on, the more likely you are to die. You could just, you're going to die almost uh, immediately if he holds on for like 10 seconds. And he kills this woman and he hires a woman to track these Three girls that killed him in his vision down using this NSA technology. He's which, which looks like the dark finding these three. Which looks like the Dark Knight thing, right? With the, with the, beautiful, isn't it? I <laughs> got all the things. He's like, I need to find Joker. This is unethical and dangerous, Mister Wayne. <laughs> I will not be part of this. <laughs> when you're finished, type in your name. Seventy percent of his dialogue is, "I must find these girls. They're gonna kill me. I must find these girls. They're gonna destroy me. They're gonna kill me. They're gonna destroy we me." We must. Over I must kill them first. Over and over again. Eighty yard. Eighty yard is saying this to characters. It's the same. The same characters too. It's actually the same. It's the woman he gets to run the NSA thing, right? He yeah. He says it to her like four times, and he says the same thing every time, and it's all eighty yard. He goes, "I must find them because they're going." I to must kill find me. them. They're going to kill me. I must find them. They're going to destroy me. All of his that's like. Pretty okay, much dude, almost we, get, all your, of his we get your motivation. What a one dimensional fucking villain. <laughs> Everything else is a generic, uh, we're running for see, our lives thriller. I can see the future. Yeah. Future. This is the worst That's So Raven episode I've ever seen, <laughs> by the way. This is horrible. Cassandra Webb is like Raven, and I was like, That's So Raven was on at this time, I think. So I, I just I just want Raven Simone back in this role. She did it way better on That's So Raven. Well, My mom got bit by the spider, and. As like Cassie was being born, so I guess like the powers like got trained. I, I guess some sort of dormant powers got transferred to her and whatnot. But this this is actually kind of funny. They go to uh, one of the bridges in New York to save a guy in an overturned car. So this is her and Adam Scott. Now they're in a, they're in a paramedic job. They're on a paramedic job, and there's a guy in an overturned car on a bridge. And they get the guy out of the car, but this is kind of funny. She gets trapped in the car. Like some Final Destination <laughs> shit. Yeah, she gets trapped in the car as it goes over the bridge and falls in the water. And that somehow activates her superhero abilities or something because, like, as soon as she hits the water, she gets transported to knock off Doctor Strange, like, exterior all around her. There, There's, like, CGI webbing and there's, like, glimpses from her past and her future just kind of floating around her mm-hmm. and whatnot not terrible cgi effects i will give it this it's the only part of the movie that has any kind of energy to it yeah yeah <laughs> she has no idea what's going on but she's getting like thrusted and thrown around and then gets revived by adam scott dakota johnson in this is as dead as they come i've seen her be good i've seen her elevate bad material yeah that is not what she she is neither of these we all saw this. 50 shades of gray Oh, you did too? Yeah, once. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm being serious. Even in Fifty Shades of Grey, that material sucks, and she tried to do something with it. She's yeah. not trying in this. She's fished out of the water and begins to have her first sign of clairvoyance because she sees something in the future, but you don't know it's the future, and I guess they're doing it because it's a stylistic choice to make it as confusing as she does. Did you just say stylistic? There's nothing stylish about I, this movie. I'm not <laughs> sure what they're doing, but when she starts having these visions about the future, which is, again, what That's So Raven did, at least in That's So Raven, it like goes into her eye, and it like goes around it, and you know it's a vision. In this, you have no idea what's a vision and what's not. No. It just, until she starts doing it a second time, and then you're like, oh, 
that was a vision. <laughs> it's almost like it feels like it's Final Destination, but at least in Final Destination, it's only one fucking time that happens. She goes to this baby shower after, I, I don't know, she should probably be on like uh, disabled leave or something from having died on the job. And she's like, nah, I'll go drink beer at a baby shower because I hang out with the boys. And then the boys are like, nah, you, no girls allowed. Go hang out with the girls. And she's like, fuck. So she meets Ben's sister in law, Mary Parker. Mary Parker. Played by Emma Roberts. Emma If you're a millennial, you've you've lived to see your 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 Emma Roberts become your your older moms now. Dude, Vanessa said the same thing about that Firestarter remake. Because oh, Zach yeah. Efron is in it playing like a dad. And oh. she was like, no. <laughs> yeah, well, it's the where, same thing. Where the, did the time I go? Re- I remember, I remember Emma Roberts is like, wasn't it, wasn't it like Unfabulous. Unfabulous. She's also in Scream 4 as like a, te- right. as a teenager. And then uh she was also in American Horror Story, probably their most popular season. She's in the Coven, the Coven one. Most of their seasons, I think. She's in she's in a couple of them. We also get our first product placement uh in in this movie as well. That's right. That's right. It, Should ha- we say what it is? He, oh yeah. He hands her. He's like, "You came back from the dead. Here's a Pepsi. You can't have alcohol. Here. Have the have Here. the Pepsi. Have it. You, you got to show Take the it. camera. He didn't show. He didn't show me. He Take didn't it. show her. You got to show the camera. Uh, <laughs> Pepsi sponsored all of this, and there's multiple times you see them. But that's the first one. He's like, have this Pepsi. And he's like shoving it into the camera. Adam Scott's <laughs> like that. It's like Dakota Johnson's off to the side. He's like, here. And it's like shoving it past her head. And when she takes it, it, she's clearly holding it. So the label is shown yeah. clearly. But this leads to the only funny part in the movie where they're playing like games of like, guess the baby's name. Mm-hmm. And spoilers, they never do. But because we all fucking know who what his name's going to be. It's implied. It's implied. They get to Dakota Johnson. They're just like. The name of the baby is Ben Riley. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. The Scarlet Spider. <laughs> she gives birth to Miles Morales. Miles Richard, Morales. <laughs> Whoa. Richard, Richard Parker's like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> This is the only funny part of the movie because she, I I forget how, but she ends up admitting like, oh, I didn't know my mom. She died in childbirth. She died in childbirth. And (laughs) and and everyone just looks at her. And Emma Roberts is like, my baby. And Emma Roberts is like, uh, and Dakota Johnson is like, "Uh, well, it's like really rare that women die from childbirth. Can we move on? Yes. But it turns (laughs) out she. That was actually pretty funny. She has another vision in the middle of it that something is going to happen that she, that immediately happens after it. The, the character doesn't know that she's having a vision, so you don't know she's having a vision. Remember when everyone keeps waking up in New Nightmare? And you're like, what's a dream in this? <laughs> but, the, but the thing is, that's chosen for that reason. It's supposed to confuse the viewer because, you know, it's the meta. But this is just not that. <laughs> Imagine if this movie just had random earthquakes, too. <laughs> oh, my God. No, don't say that right now. Oh, my God. They get a call that, I guess, a fireworks factory is on flyer. Fi- fl- flyer? Flyer? They get the a call. Fire, the, the fireworks the, factory is on fire. Yeah, the the fireworks storage warehouse by the dock is on fire. So they all go down there. She's trying to save some people, and she has a vision that Mike Epps, Mike Epps, who's like her boss, I think, shouldn't drive the paramedic that he's going to drive someone to the hospital. He shouldn't in. drive an ambulance yes. because she thinks he's going to get hit by a car. Yes. Which he does immediately. He drives, <laughs> he literally, literally <laughs> pulls down the street and then gets fucking plowed by a semi truck. It looks really, it's actually kind of a funny looking it's visual. It's so funny. Like it, it happens and then she's like, <gasps> and she like hears it behind her and she like runs over. It's like, gee, like that. No, screams. I knew this was going to happen. I, I could have done something. Stop it. Oh, oh no. God, what a curse I have. Like, woe is me. Blah, blah, blah. I'm it, sad. It's, so, and also, let's keep, let's keep a running tally. This is the first time somebody's been hit by a car in this movie. (laughs) She now is deciding if she's going to go to the funeral or not. And she's having a nice day at home after going to the doctors and then her being like, I see these visions. And I have these. Let's just say hypothetically, doctor, I have in my dreams. I'm Spider-Man. Yeah. (laughs) I'm just climbing that wall, climbing that wall. Maybe you're not supposed to be Spider-Man climbing that wall. (laughs) And she has a vision that again, you don't know is a vision of a pigeon crashing into her window and dying. And she's like, it's not going to do anything. And she opens the window and the pigeon's alive. It flies through the window. It's alive. And she goes, I can change the future. And she 
was watching. What was she watching? She, she was watching wa- a Christmas Carol. She was watching a Christmas. Is this a Christmas movie? Yeah, a Christmas movie. This is like it's. She's watching like the 1951 Christmas Carol, and this it's like, is now you this. You can't change the future, or he's like, I can change the future. Are she these goes, no. are these things that will happen, or are these things that could happen? And I'm like, this is the second Adam Scott movie I've seen where someone is watching the 1951 <laughs> Christmas Carol. What's the first? Krampus. Oh, okay. <laughs> Anyway, she decides, oh, yeah, I can save people. So she's going to go to the funeral in Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, which I only know because that's where Snooki is from Oh, yeah. in Jersey Shore. <laughs> she goes to Grand Central. I mean, she's not wearing black at all. She sports like a Claire Redfield jacket yeah. throughout the whole movie. And I'm like, if you were going to the funeral, why are you wearing that? Oh, yeah. Uh, maybe maybe don't wear red. That bitch in Sixth Sense wore red yeah. to her daughter's <laughs> funeral. But it's okay because right now the other three characters show up that we're going to be forced to deal with for the rest of the movie. But this is technically the first first cinematic appearance for these three characters, all of which who have actually gone under the, the mantle of Spider-Woman, even though the real Spider-Woman original is Jessica Drew. Uh, they've all been Spider-Woman at one point in the comics. Okay, that's, that's, so these characters are from the comics. These these three exist, yeah. I think Julia Cornwall was in Spider-Verse in oh. one of the stills in the background of when they're in Spider-Central. Sydney Sweeney? Yeah, well, not Sydney Sweeney. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, that would have been great uh, great advertising, wouldn't it have been? Yeah, uh, I mean, they're both Sony they got, products. They so. got Yuri Lowenthal Spider-Man in there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, Sony, you need to keep that as far away from your live action team as possible. You need to keep your animation of Spider Verse as far away Don't just from do your ver- ver- universe as possible as it can. I don't know if there's going to be like a Sony Civil War that's going to happen over it, but uh, we need to. We there's only one side that's good, and uh, you need to stay away. You need to keep them away from whatever's happening over there. Don't Maybe, just do it for us. Do it for you. Do it for you. Self-respect, please. This is the first time we see Ezekiel in his Spider-Man getup, which is... The not Spider-Man getup. Yeah, it, which looks like... I mean, for a cosplayer, it'd be like, hey, that's great, man. Looks good, you know? Yeah. But for a multi-million dollar budget movie, it looks uh, like ass. So they're all on the train together, these three plus Dakota Johnson. And she has a vision. Well, she doesn't know it, but she <laughs> sees... She uh, sees Ezekiel walk Ezekiel on the train walk and just through the door. Choke these three out. Basically, just like th- like choke slam Sydney Sweeney. Fucking throw Maddie Franklin into the uh, Celeste O'Connor into the oh, fucking yeah. ceiling of the subway. And, like, they all slam die her. in fairly bloodless ways, dude. Th- but it's, it looks really funny. <laughs> it's good. And then she, he she like suddenly snaps back to reality. Anyway, she runs up. Grabs these three girls. Get off this train. You're going to die. Oh, Get yeah. Get off this train. You're, you're, come on, come on. You're going to die. Ezekiel sees this, and he's just like, hmm, tricky. So he dons his Spider-Man getup, and in a really boring introduction to his Spider-Man getup, we just see him, like, wall crawl Crawling across the, the ceiling. ceiling at them. And just really slowly. Oh, no, he's coming. He's still not here. He's coming. He's not quite Spider-Man, but he does look like Spider-Man. He looks like a more, he looks like if Miles Morales took his suit and took more of the red out and just put it more black. Like that, that's, that's all. There's red in there, but it's mostly black. It's pretty, it sucks though. Yeah, it sucks. It's it's not a good costume. Miles would never, (laughs) Miles would never (laughs) design a costume like this. They're all saying she's abducting them, but then, you know, obviously Ezekiel shows up, kills a bunch of cops around them. Yeah. Kills and all I'm the just cops. Like, I go, what are you grabbing the cops for? Because apparently no one else can see him except these four. No, no one else notices him because he kills everybody else who sees well, him. Well, nobody, Everyb- yeah, nobody's even noticing him. I was like, is he invisible or is he just like, I can't tell. No, it's just because there's no one else on the platform. Yes. And then the cops show up and then the cops try to fight him, but he easily kills them all. And then on the platform across the track, Matt Smith is, you know, killing a bunch of cops <laughs> in slow motion. Oh my God. <laughs> Every action scene in this movie is boring as hell. This yeah. chase through the subway, boring. They're they're running through doors. They're, go, they're running upstairs, going through different platforms. To go to Johnson steals a taxi. She steals a cab. Loads the, loads the three <laughs> girls in and is like, "Let's go, bitches!" and goes off on like a fun camping trip. Get in, losers! We're going to survive. We're going camping. And and I don't know where does she drive them. I don't know. She New takes York. them to like I, I'm assuming somewhere east. It looks like she took them to the woods from the Blair Witch Project. Yeah, <laughs> she like takes them to the woods and is like, "Hey, I'll be back. I need to go investigate." my childhood because she's kept all of her stuff from her mom that she somehow got once she was there and she goes uh stay here uh here's some beef jerky i found 
please in the cab. <laughs> do not do not go anywhere because that man is gonna kill you. Don't do and anything much, stupid. And I'm pretty much all you can rely on. So uh, I'll be back in like three hours. And she drives back. But also at the same time, it is now wanted by the police for abducting these three girls off the subway. How would they know? He killed all the cops. He killed all the cops. I guess they saw security camera footage, but didn't notice that thing running around. The oh, the no. Spider-Man. My mom was researching spiders. That guy was crawling around like a spider. Like a spider. <gasps> oh, and it turns out. She, there was a picture of her mom and him the entire time in that yeah. fucking truck. Yeah. She's like, oh, wait, that is That's that the same guy. guy. That's the same guy that tried to kill the girls. Huh. While the girls are waiting for her, they, I guess, kind of bond, but are also like, fuck this, we're hungry, and they go find a diner. Yes. Where they attract a lot of attention. They attract a themselves. lot of attention. I also just want to say, what are the notable characteristics of each of these young actresses? Well, th- their characters, Nick. Do you, do you have any? <laughs> Why isn't it just one girl? They're yeah. all interchangeable. They're all pretty interchangeable. So this is it. Sydney Sweeney's character is sad uh, and, and alone. Nerdy looking. Sla- sad and just not loved by her family. That's yeah. it. Who's Celeste, Celeste O'Connor. O'Connor's character is a, pretty much abandoned and rich. Her parents don't really want her, but also... She's a little rebel girl. She's rebel, but also has a ton of money because her dad works in plastics, microplastics or something like that. And then... <laughs> is, Poor Isabel Mercedes. Isabel Mercedes's <laughs> character, Audrey Corazon, is smart and Mexican. That, that's her whole thing because her dad was deported. <laughs> and she's been living alone for like the past like six months or yeah. something like that. So she's so so her character is smart, alone, Latina. <laughs> it's and, and so none of them, like none of them, maybe Celeste O'Connor, none of them have any personality to them. None they at all. are all just sad and confused. Most sad of the and time. confused teenage girls. Yeah. yeah. They all go to a diner because they're hungry and they decide that it's like, we shouldn't attract attention. But then they find a group of boys sitting at a Let's different table. Let's go flirt with them. Let's go flirt with these boys. And the only one that doesn't is on your car zone, is, Isabel, Isabel Merced. Merced yeah. Isabel Merced. Because Isabel Merced has been living on her own and I'm assuming she's hungry. So she's like, oh my God, food. Because <laughs> <laughs> Maggie right. Frank is just buying everything. It doesn't matter that Ezekiel has access to all of this NSA surveillance. That never finds them. Some dude calls the police station <laughs> and he's like, hey, I think those three kidnapped girls are in here. And, <laughs> and then she's like, oh, we found him. I found him. No, you didn't, bitch. That guy did. <laughs> and so Ezekiel's like, I'm going to drive myself over there and go kill him. So I guess he leaves the city, drives out there. Uh, Dakota Johnson gets back. She's like, ah, oh, crap, where are they? they she sees them dancing she see, she, on a table. She has a vision of herself running into the diner. No, we don't know it's a vision yet. Well, you don't know. She runs into the diner, sees them dancing on a table to Britney Spears Toxic. Why are they dancing on a table? <laughs> and why aren't they being kicked out? Why are they being doing kicked that? out? What is happening? <laughs> but Ezekiel shows up, uh, runs over, and fucking... Dude, like Sydney Sweeney's character gets like the worst fictional death in this one because he she just get, he like puts her up against the like stool and just like karate chops her in the <laughs> neck and like breaks her neck like head against the stool, <laughs> leaning forward, bam, just fucking Is dead. Is that what he does? It looked like he punched her in the back of the neck. Yeah, or it's something. pretty much like, like punched her. You just her in hear the back. like a you hear like a really soft like bone cracking yeah. noise or something. It's yeah. really quick. Yeah, it's like he has it. He pushes her head up against the stool. Her like faces in the stool and just like bam. <laughs> it's like one touch because Dakota Johnson tries to intervene. She tries stabbing him with butter knife because like, yeah. it's a diner and he stabs her. Boom. Smash cut to. Oh, that was, was a vision. Just a vision. But she goes, don't worry. I know the way around this. I know where they're at. She drives to the diner and she sees the. And she, at this time, the girls are like, oh, my God, still I love up on the table. I love Brittany. Let's go dance on the table. Oh, my God. Oh. Ezekiel shows up, walks through the door and takes like, his time. Oh, my God. He's going to kill us all. Nope. It's okay. Dakota Johnson's like, I'll solve this right now and drives the cab through the front of the restaurant, runs him fucking over. (laughs) He goes flying into like the kitchen. (laughs) Like it's Terminator 2 or something. Anyway, so again, if we're keeping track, that's two. Sorry, that's two Two people been hit by cars in this movie now. 
She's like, get in the fucking car. And she's, oh, she's just, mad at them. Like, yeah. this is the most like emotion she shows in the movie. She's like, you dumb fucking bitches. <laughs> what did I tell I you? I told you not to do anything. You never <laughs> think of anyone by yourself. And I was you like, impulsive fucking teenagers. And <laughs> I go, and I was just like, oh my God, she sounds so fucking old in this right yeah. now. <laughs> if you ever catch yourself, and I do mean this honestly, audience, if you ever say these dumb fucking teenagers, you impulsive idiots, like, what the fuck else did you expect from them? They're idiots. They're teenagers. Of course they're like that. Did you ever see Next with Nicolas Cage? No, Nic I don't think so. Nicolas Cage, he plays a dude who can see the future. He can yeah. see multiple outcomes of the future. And so that gives him the ability to choose mm -hmm. what he can do. Uh, throughout the movie, he can see what's going to happen if he does this or if nothing happens. And this, yeah, th th yeah. And so over and over again, he plays like futures out to see what's the best outcome of whatnot. So odds can work in his favor. And he works in Vegas as like a magician. So he can like, you know, okay. take people for a ride and whatnot. That movie had style and even a little bit of substance mm -hmm. to it, especially in how they depicted him seeing the future. Oh, okay. they had a lot. They, it, you can tell they had a lot of fun writing the certain the uh, multiple ways that he was trying to fix the future or see which best outcome he can come up with. Okay. That's why it's called next, because he's just like, what happens next? Oh, okay. What can happen next? What do I want to happen next? Okay. And this does none of that. Seeing the future seems like a really fun power. How did you manage to make it look so fucking boring and lame? This movie's two hours long. We could have cut this down to maybe an hour and 15 minutes. 15 <laughs> This movie's two hours long with a story that is, I have to protect these idiots and I can see the future, and they do fuck all with that. But it takes its fucking time getting from scene to scene just for the littlest piece of plot. Stay in the woods. I'm going back to the apartment. Let's find the book. Something about spiders. I'm gonna try to climb a wall. I'll go back. Where's the girls? They're in a diner being stereotypes. Yes. I just described about 30 to 40 minutes worth of this movie. <laughs> I'm serious. This, is, this movie is so boring. Nothing happens in this movie. It sounds like we're still in the first act, maybe. We're halfway through. Yeah. After this, they go to a motel. This smashed up cab is parked half a mile away at a motel that they're all staying at, and they do not find it. <laughs> The police are looking for the person that kidnapped these girls. And they're like, and now there's a person that ran into a diner outside of town. Where is the cab that did it? Everyone saw a cab. The cab is parked right there. It's got a smash front and they cannot find it. She has a vision. She's going to leave these girls. She's like, I'm going to leave. Drives off, goes back to the diner. And with somehow the same cab that committed <laughs> the fucking crime. <laughs> and connects somehow is able to communicate with the villain yeah ray and last the uh, last jedi style oh yeah. yeah where she's having like a talk with kylo ren this is him ha her having a talk with ezekiel but this is also as it turns out a vision a vision it didn't happen she wakes up in the hotel room she's like oh i didn't leave them i guess i'll stay i'll teach them cpr she teaches them cpr <laughs> and decides I know where I need to go. I need to go to Peru to learn about Los Las Arañas, the spider people. I'm going to fly to Peru. I'll be back in a week. I'll be back. Is it a week? I don't Yeah. Know. She but leaves. Fuck if we're supposed to be able to tell because know. we don't even see her go to the airport, get on a plane. Next scene, she's in Peru. She's in Peru. She's in the she, gives, she gives the girls, she's like, here, Adam Scott, these are your three teenagers now. I need you to help me. I need you to help me. Here are these three teenagers. She, he's like, aren't their parents going to worry? And they're like, nah, none of our parents none care. And I go, no one them. cares. I understand Isabel Merced's father is in Mexico right now. <laughs> I understand that. He's yeah. He's got a legit he, excuse. He, he doesn't know what's going on as much as Sydney Sweeney's parents don't care about her. They got to have a question of where the fuck is our child that we are responsible for. <laughs> if she is dead, we're in real trouble. None of them care about them, but it doesn't matter because they're staying with the Adam Scott, Ben Parker and his pregnant wife. No, his pregnant sister-in-law. Pregnant sister-in-law. My apologies. Uh, where the fuck is Richard Parker? <laughs> I, uh, he says he's like somewhere there. He's like, yo, he's not back for the birth. I don't know. It doesn't matter because Dakota Johnson is now. Okay. You're going to have to fill me in here because this is when I went to the bathroom and got more alcohol. So I don't know what happened here. No, dude, she goes to Peru immediately. I know she's, she's there. She's just in the jungle. I'm like, you're right. I should be watching Romancing the Stone. Yeah. And 
just finds the spider guy, like the dude at the beginning who says, oh, when she comes back, I will be here for her. And he's like not in his like spider tribe garb. He's just like, he's just he's like a all, normal dude. Yeah, he right? just looks all normal. He's like, I knew you'd be back. Takes her to the Goonies cave <laughs> and just shoves her in the water. And, uh, and so she can have her like spider visions of yeah. what happens. She can see the past now because she's been seeing the future the entire movie. And she's always been under the assumption that her mom just fucking hated her. Yep. <laughs> she's Turns like, why did, no. you come to, why did you come to Peru while you were pregnant as hell with me? Turns out she was going to have a disease and she was looking for the cure, which would have been the spider's bite and peptides. Peptides, science talk, spy, spider, science talk, peptides. When the, what was that disease Morbius had was going to be that? <laughs> <laughs> That was the reason, and you might ask, cool, we're going to get some superhero Dakota Johnson development. Nope, every time she learns a new power, every time somebody does something cool, it's off screen. We do not get to see this happen. She learns how to astral project, too. Off screen. Yeah. (laughs) Hey, audience, you remember in, like, The Karate Kid when uh, Daniel LaRusso went to Mr. Miyagi's house, and he's like, yeah, I'll teach you, and then they just jump cut to the the All-Valley Karate Tournament, and you didn't learn how he learned karate? This is like if Mr. Miyagi just cut out the middle. Like, that's how it feels. Everything is such a blue ball. I want to see these characters learn to do things. The fun of Spider-Man is learning to watch him swing and do everything and like grow and stuff like that. But we don't get that. We don't get anything here. What's the point of like watching Batman if he doesn't learn to build his shit and learn how to fight and everything? The hero has to learn about their powers. Like, what's the whole point of having powers? And that's another thing we even have to give Morbius is they had a fucking scene in that movie of him learns learning his shit. Powers. It's, it's insane. Even that had that. Even Venom had a talk between uh, fucking, uh, what's his face? Tom Hardy and, and Venom had a nice talk about the powers for a while. I am Venom <laughs> and you are mine. <laughs> well, that's Tony Todd Venom, actually. Yeah. Tom Hardy Venom's like this. <laughs> the lethal protector. Soy lethal protector. I used to say, fuck these movies and not go and not see them anymore. That I used to, audience. And then I started doing the podcast with this guy. And all of a sudden, now I'm seeing all of them. <laughs> what happened to me? Uh, back at Ben's house, Adam Scott, the girls are going to watch a movie. And they're all throwing popcorn at each other. And Emma Roberts runs in and is like, my water just broke. And I just remember... The Celeste- baby I won't name is coming. <laughs> the Celeste O'Connor just goes, Ew. Bitch. Bitch, that's gross. <laughs> and so they all say, oh, we have to go out and help her. Meanwhile, for however long these girls have been at this house, the NSA woman that has been working with Ezekiel has again been unable to find them. <laughs> what is the whole point of having the NSA thing if it doesn't fucking work? It doesn't work once through the whole movie. It's some guy that finds them at the diner and calls in. It's not. It, it, it only works when they leave the house. You know, all Ezekiel's doing is checking every day. And be like, Do you, have you found them? Well, no, I haven't found them. Uh, you need to find them immediately. And his, he's talking, but then the dialogue doesn't, his voice doesn't match up. They will destroy me. That's how they ta- he talks. And then, then the next day, I'm assuming, with, what, what, I'm, what? I'm assuming he comes the next day and he's like, have you found them? No. You need to find them. I keep having visions that they will come in and kill me in the middle of the night. That's you need to find them. That's all his fucking That's dialogue. That's all the dialogue is. again. And then the third day, he comes over. He's like, have you found them yet? And she goes, no. <laughs> and then he start, takes a breath and she goes, she, you're going to kill you. They're going to destroy you. I need to find them. I know, man. I know. I'm working at it. Same thing. So that's that. So they all get in the car and they're driving to the hospital. And one of the cameras catches, I think, Celeste O'Connor's face at, this, at the side of the the, the Why call- do they go with them? I don't know. <laughs> Why? Because the plot demands it. <laughs> the plot demands that they go with them. Again, these dumb kids go again. But it's okay because Dakota Johnson is suddenly back from Peru. <laughs> no, no indication she was coming back. I was like, how long has it been? How long have you been in Peru? Three days? Two hours? Help me to recollect. <laughs> She's driving the same stolen cab when she comes back. She's Peru. driving the same cab that's all smashed up, but it's okay. <laughs> Where did she leave it? I, I, I'm assuming. I'm assuming. How did she leave the country? I'm assuming at that same motel. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> she's driving the same cab. She gets back. Steals a paramedic. She steals an ambulance because she figures out. Oh, they went to the hospital, and now she's they're being chased by 
Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Because he knows that they're out there. He finds them all in the car. He's he's standing above them in the car. He jumps onto the hood and he's like, you're all fucked. You're going to die. But it's okay because from a, <laughs> from a parking garage, I guess above Times Square, is that where they're at? She drives through, she drives the ambulance through a parking garage and through a concrete barrier through a uh through a Times square jumbotron yeah that comes out exactly right over where he is standing yeah on top of their car boom ambulance Hits comes him. crashing out like it's the rock driving an ambulance into the drone in fast and furious seven and <laughs> she comes crashing out of the jumbotron at him he decides to jump yeah he decides to jump and I'm like, that ambulance was going to clear you, bro. Why did you jump in the way of the ambulance and just get to- <laughs> This is the second time. No, third time someone's gotten hit by a car in this. Second time the villain's gotten hit by a car Third in this. time. So we're up to three now times he's been hit by a car. We have multiple think cool things that have happened off screen. I see everything now. She can see everything. She's giving them instructions. Electrocute the roof right at this time. Boom, we got him. I'm I know, showing off. I know exactly where, I know exactly what's going to happen. She takes him to the same fireworks factory that uh, Mike Epps got hit by a car at earlier in the movie uh, during the ambulance. And, and gets onto the roof, sets off the fireworks. There's just even Michael Bay would be all like, "What is happening? What There's is just happening? Explosions and fireworks going off. They're throwing flares in like all the fireworks. Just setting and them off. Her ability to see the future now is this. You don't get to see it. You don't get to see it anymore. It's this. She essentially says, oh, "Don't step there. Back up." And she backs up, and an explosion happens there. It's like I saved it. Fireworks are going off. She has like a trash can lid. Is that what she has? Oh, I don't know. It's and some sort of like it's a giant piece of like she, metal. That she's not even looking, and she's like deflecting the fireworks away because she's like, "I know where they're gonna be." Bam, 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 bam behind me. This whole time, fuck all. If you can tell what's going on, too. This movie is terribly shot and edited. It's it's choppy as shit. Eventually, all the girls are like in danger. They're like all about like they're like hanging on for dear life about to fall. But that's OK, because power number this from the spider allows Cassie to astral project into three different people and save the girls, save all way. three at once. When did she learn this off screen? Who knows? <laughs> off screen. You didn't see it. Oh, by the way, it turns out that this fireworks factory is owned by Pepsi. <laughs> oh yeah, Pepsi has a sign on the side of <laughs> There's it. There's like this entire finale takes place on this big neon Pepsi Cola sign. Yeah, so here's <laughs> like it's the end of Highlander. Here's the advertise <laughs> his second advertisement again and they're having so they have this huge fight and she gets like what? thrown into the water and drowns. But or she also, she yeah, has a confrontation with him and whatnot. She he like hits her into the water and the she Pepsi falls, but but not before he like gets crushed by the Pepsi yeah, sign. He falls, he falls and hits the hits the ground but below like his vision. He's like no, hits the ground. The falling Pepsi sign just crushes him. Now I can't tell if this was actually how he was supposed to die or he was supposed to die by the three girls becoming spider people in the future we don't know who knows we never see him did again. she right did she change the future did she did she change his feet who fucking knows they bring cassandra webb back even though she got hit by a firework and she's blind now they like give her cpr she's alive i think that's pretty much it they cut to the end of the movie and they're all living together they're all living together so she did kidnap these three girls <laughs> so they're all living in her apartment and they go, they get some takeout, and they give her some Pepsi <laughs> from the fridge. Ah, good time. And then they say, it's like, we will help the people in the future. In the, in the future. You will see these three girls. In the future. Get their powers. In the future. Not here. Not, Not here. now. Not, and that's the end of the movie. There's no stinger at the end, right? No. No. <laughs> Fuck me, dude. This, is, this was... <sighs> Again, just like it's such a nothing movie. You don't nothing cool happens on screen. Sydney Sweeney's character in Euphoria is named Cassie. Oh, really? So every time she is yelling or saying Cassie in this in this movie, I was just like, why are you talking to yourself? Talking to yourself. <laughs> yeah. But this is impressively lame. Yes. Is, is all I can say. I, about I also it. feel like I feel like I have to owe you an apology. I, I really should be giving Venom much more credit. Like I <laughs> if you were to consider like Sony, you know, just the Sony Spider-Verse movies. 
the Venom and Venom Let There Be Carnage have to be Oscar worthy. <laughs> like if you would think of anything else, not saying they are, but what I'm saying is if you were to consider just the Sony movies and there's only four of them and two of them are Venom. I was really considering it. This feels like it's almost like a fan made movie. This don't feels disrespect like, fans like that. This is a, <laughs> the, I, I know and it, it's bad, but like this is like if somebody like had a little bit of money and wanted to do like a fan made thing, but had never really made a movie before. But if that was considered, you'd be like, man, not bad. Good job. You know what I mean? Like this isn't bad for like a first time, but for a, for a studio to do this, this is horrible. This is one of the worst things. This is one of the worst ones I've seen. This is a lazy, no effort, boring, lame, just frustratingly obvious first cut of a movie they accidentally shipped to the theater. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I got nothing else to say about this because this movie is nothing. I will give this movie one thing. Okay. I now know how to perform CPR. Okay. Well, we learned it. <laughs> <laughs> I, Do you uh, want to move on? <laughs> Well, the last thing I'll say, and this will be kind of it, it, it truly feels like, again, no one in this movie cares. It, it just all feels like Sony doesn't care about the product they're putting out anymore. And in, in a lot of ways, I, I do have to ask this. Are we reaching the point now, Nick, with superhero movies that inevitably we knew was going to happen eventually, you know, where a lot of these genres go to where there's a whole bunch of just really, really bad, mediocre getting less and less copy of a copy that we reached with 80s action movies that we reached with slasher movies where we're getting these ones that just are kind of forgettable you can look back on some of those 80s action movies and say you know like we recently rewatched action jackson we're like this didn't get a lot of positive reviews but there's a lot of cool stuff in here rest in peace carl weathers carl weathers yeah r.i.p but we, we you know we have these questions of are have we gotten here and you know, wh where where we go and how are we going to navigate the genre? But it's worth considering if we're reaching the point now in, in superhero movies where they're just horribly forgettable and they're just mail it in the entire time, which a lot of these genres get to. I think pretty much every genre has. Especially these. They're churned out. We know exactly why. So Sony can keep the rights to Spider-Man. Yeah. And they obviously do not care about quality just as long as they can keep the rights, which is, which is just, it's completely obvious and sickeningly cynical yes. of them. It's horrible, which is an odd thing because the animation department is killing it. Well, that, <laughs> with, with a, a, lot of, well a lot of that Sony is hands off. Yeah, yeah. They, <laughs> they, I don't think so. I think Sony's smart enough to just be like, "Fuck it, let's let's just invest in that." Yeah, I, it's just it's the tale of two the tale of two Spider Men from Sony right now. <laughs> What's Spider Man? There's no Spider Man here. Well, it's he, he's gonna be born. He just wasn't born. He, he was born. We saw him be born. We saw him be born. Never got named. Never got named. <laughs> His name is credits. Yeah. <laughs> That would have been great. Shall we move on to the facts section? I've got them ready. All right. These are the three facts about the movie I wrote down and, and researched. I haven't looked at box office numbers. I don't want to yet. Let's just leave it. Uh, well, it's only been a couple. It's only been like, it's not even been a week since it's been out. So we'll just leave that. But these are the three facts. And again, these are real facts that I found very quickly about this movie. Facts number one. Dakota Johnson stated in an interview, quote, I've never really done a movie where you are on a blue screen and there's fake explosions going off and someone's going explosion and you act like there's an explosion. That to me was absolutely psychotic. I was like, I don't know if this is going to be good at all. I hope that I did an okay job. What do you think, Nick? Did she do an okay job? From what Dakota Johnson said in interviews, it seems like she she doesn't fucking care. Like she's kind of I think she signed on and we'll we'll, we'll talk about this after the final the final fact too, but she did. She made fun of it when she hosted SNL not too long ago, I think. Oh, really? Yeah, she was. She was making fun of Madam Web. What do you think she did? An okay job. Well, let's leave boom, that to boom, our viewer. Boom, <laughs> boom, 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 boom. Don't step there. Don't go there. Don't go there. Back Don't. up. <laughs> <laughs> That's more emotion than she yeah, showed. Yeah. Fact number two. Epic Games strongly refused to collaborate with this film and include elements in its popular game Fortnite due to its unfavorable drastic changes made during reshoots. Fortnite isn't that desperate, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> They'll get the rights to everything and put it in the game and give anyone a piece of the cut. They would not put this in their game. What are they going to put? There's nothing to fucking put in this. Well, I, I was hoping I would just get to be Adam Scott <laughs> running around. <laughs> 
Driving a driving a pregnant Mary Poppins. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Back to number three. The original screenplay was described as darker and very Terminator inspired, which would have seen Madam Web and the Spider Women trying to protect a pregnant Mary Parker from Ezekiel Sims, who wants to kill her to prevent the birth of Peter Parker. That's the Terminator. Would you shoot baby Spider-Man in the crib to prevent Bully Maguire? <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the nature of the movie. That was how it was pitched initially. And that's why Dakota Johnson said she signed on. Was like, this was the script initially. Which actually, I'll be honest, sounds kind of interesting. Sounds better than this. Sounds way better. than We actually get to see the Spider-Women. Yeah, and maybe even learn some more about how they got their powers. Uh, my first time I saw Madam Web was in the Spider-Man, the animated series cartoon. She, like, helps Peter Parker out in the animated series. Oh, she's good? Oh, yeah, she's good. And she actually helps him. That's the first time I ever... That's the first Spider-Verse I ever got where, like, Peter Parker gets to meet, like, Spider-Man from alternate realities. That sounds way better. I, I, I guess it's just been cut up and turned to shit, and Dakota Johnson's just like, fuck it, I, I don't care. <laughs> she's like, I don't care, I'll trash this shit. And honestly, maybe it does deserve to be trashed. Maybe this is a, maybe this is a story of studio interference. Usually we have a bit for you. What are, what are you going to do? I have two things, actually. Okay, okay. Two very quick things. The first, bit. the first thing I will say is, <laughs> what spider-related movie would you rather watch than this? It doesn't have to be Spider-Man, right? No, no Spider-Man. Like, what spider-related, what movie featuring, like, that has to do with spiders? Would you rather watch than this? Uh, Eight-Legged Freaks. Eight-Legged Freaks! <laughs> so yes! I'd rather watch Eight-Legged yes! Freaks. <laughs> Even if you hate spiders, Eight-Legged Freaks is worth a watch, totally. Uh, if you hate spiders, don't watch Arachnophobia. You know? <laughs> no, I don't fuck with you. Though. Yeah. But I saw some trailers for uh, some new spider movies coming out. There's like a French movie called Vermin. Okay. You remember that movie we watched in college with uh, Greg Grunberg, Big Ass Spider? Yeah. Yeah. It looks like a more actual horror movie version of that. Where okay. They're like hunting spiders in like a loose in an apartment building. Okay. And there's another one called Sting where like a spider from space like lands in a backyard and a little girl, a little lonely girl, like keeps it as a pet, but it oh starts growing. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I'm just like, hey, spider movies are making a comeback. That's pretty cool. <laughs> there we go. You may know this if you watch the Morbius review mm -hmm. or listen to it. Mm -hmm. I made a drinking game out of <gasps> watching Morbius. Yes, that was Nick. Nick almost died with that. Yeah. Yes. In Morbius. I locked it away in the Blu-ray, never to be seen again. Yes. During the Morbius episode, I detailed the drinking game. Yes. And explained the rules. Yeah. You had a good idea. Okay. And I took that good idea. Oh, wh and how would you do? I made a Madam Web drinking the game. The Madam Web <laughs> drinking game. <laughs> because if you are going to watch this movie, you best do it while drinking. You better, you better get yourself an Arachnorita or whatever I, whatever I said earlier. So based on everything I could remember about the Madam Web movie... I made a drinking game based on when to drink during these moments or whenever these certain things happen. Okay. Much like the Morbius one. Drink every time Cassie sees the future. Okay. Drink whenever there's Pepsi product placement. <laughs> drink every time Peter Parker is alluded to but never named. <laughs> okay. Drink every time someone says Cassie. Okay. Drink... Every time the villain says the girls will destroy him. <laughs> Drink whenever Cassie steals a car. <laughs> Drink whenever someone mentions their really sad backstory. <laughs> Take a shot every time Cassie runs the villain over with a car. <laughs> And that's the Adam Webb drinking game. Oh my god, I do want to say, you will die, like, if you do that. Now listen, as You'll we be surprised how often all these things keep happening in yeah, the movie. Now listen, you're only going to take about two shots in there, but the other drinks will make up for it. There's that's a why, lot. That is why I, I, I played it very safe with this one. <laughs> oh my god. If you guys want us to... If you want us to, we will do this. We'll, we'll do it. Uh, but we, for now, you can. Lord, that, that I think it's the only way to see this movie. Get yourself one of those arachnoritas and ask for some shots on the side so you can just do that during it. 
Now, the worst part about that is you will pay because you're probably going to have to get a refill about $45 for the whole experience plus the movie ticket because those are expensive. So sneak alcohol into your theater like uh, like we may or may not do for some of these for some of these movies. <laughs> I've been to movies with this man. He always comes prepared. <laughs> well, if I know him, listen, you, you drink. Even two you good d- movies. I know, but that means it's something I want to watch. I want to get the experience. Honestly, I, so I think we can move on to our rating now, Nick. Five. Five? Yeah, so I had to, what did I give Morbius? Do you remember? Did I give it like a nine? Yeah. I gave it a nine. So I definitely feel like Madam Web deserves to be lower than it, but I also don't want to get called sexist. So this is an 8.9. Uh, <laughs> this is an 8.9 for Madam Web. Shocking. <laughs> okay, I rated it lower than you. Yeah. So this is an 8.9. It's below Morbius, but not low enough where everyone could be like, wow. So you still hate Morbius as much as this? No. No, this is worse. But you just I, don't want to be. You just, I just you don't, just want, don't to be, want to be canceled. I don't want to be canceled. So I'm going to give this an eight point nine. <laughs> so it's very close. It's very close to Morbius. But in 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 all seriousness, audience, somehow Morbius blows this thing out of the water. Only go see it if you're doing it for the lols and the memes. You cannot go into this movie expecting anything good. I don't care that Sydney Sweeney's in it. I don't care that these other people are in it. This is a bad movie that you should not see unless you're doing it. Or the fucking fun of it to drink or you have a podcast. <laughs> so in which case, if you're doing it for those three things, fine. You know fully what this movie is when you're going into it. If you don't know and you're thinking maybe I should see it. You better hope you can do it for free. This is this is not <laughs> worth it. Sony has a deal. I think they still have an ongoing deal with mm-hmm. Netflix where after about four or five months of the movies release in theaters they, they it goes, goes to netflix. netflix so there's where you can do your drinking game just give it a few months if you haven't forgotten about it yeah then. <laughs> awful this movie was awful all right so that's a 6.75 for <laughs> madam web uh divided by two this is the lowest score we've <laughs> given anything nothing has scored this low and you know what it's right where it belongs it's not it's a good an movie. Embarrassment. It's just embarrassing, yeah. really, Sony. I, I mean, above everything. I, what the fuck, man? Anyway, <laughs> that, that'll be that'll be what it is. You know what? I think we're good here. Got anything? No. All right. Just like this movie, I got nothing. All right. Thank you for listening and watching to this episode of 101, 101 Dalmatians. Thank you for listening and watching to this episode of the One and a Half White Guys podcast. Be sure to rate us, follow us, and subscribe to us wherever you get your podcast from. Be sure to follow us on our Instagram at one and a half white guys podcast on our TikTok at one and a half white guys and on our YouTube, which is hopefully where you're watching this at one and a half white guys. And be sure to tell a friend to listen to the podcast where we say we're going to talk about a movie and we well, we really did talk. We, about we really this. did talk about the movie and we see the movie. So you don't have to. There was really nothing else to talk about. Nick, if you could see the future like that's so Raven, I see us together walking into a theater and sitting down in the theater, busting out a couple of uh, couple of little, what, air travel bottles? Yeah, that we do, little Re- singles. Ready to down them as the Sony logo pops up, followed closely by In Association with Marvel, <laughs> followed closely by Craven the Hunter. Oh, God.